Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about drawing in 2D in 3D. What does that mean? Well, we get this question that comes up an awful lot. People who have SketchUp and they want to do a 2D layout or a 2D drawing or something like that. Um, I'm going to be right up front about this. I'm going to be totally straightforward. SketchUp was designed from the ground up to draw in 3D. So <laughs> I just wanted that to sink in for just a second. It will always be easiest to work in 3D in SketchUp. I mean, it doesn't even have like, you know, some 3D programs have a locked view where you only work in one plane. It doesn't have that. SketchUp is designed from the ground up to be used uh, in a 3D space like you would sculpting a sculpture or working on a building. You walk around it in 3D. Everything in SketchUp is kind of geared that direction. Now, that's not to say you can't draw on flat surfaces. You absolutely, of course, can. You can draw on any surface. Um, and some people do use SketchUp to create 2D drawings. I'm just saying that the, the way that the tool set is actually created, there's not tools specific for drawing in 2D. The tools are created and made to draw in 3D. But there's a couple, if, if you're somebody who, who needs to knock out a 2D layout or something like that, and for whatever reason, you don't want to go into 3D, uh, I have a couple of tips for you on how to go about that. We'll actually end up in kind of a 3D 2D or 2D 3D. I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to get that that disclaimer out there first. You, you might want to find, you know, maybe, maybe there's a a there's a couple free drawing programs out there to let you draw in 2D that may be worth considering. But if you're if you're dead set on drawing in 3D inside SketchUp, here's a couple tips for you. Okay. So I have right here a just a little drawing I made of a room and see I have the door swing here and then I got like a little couch end table maybe a desk and a, a chair so this is the kind of thing that people end up making so first things first if you do go down this path I'm not going to disclaim this anymore but if this is what you're dead set on creating 2d inside SketchUp uh, here's some tips on how to do this first thing is grouping each of these pieces including the room are separate groups this is absolutely essential if you create this rectangle and don't put it in a group, first thing it's going to do is join with the geometry of the floor, and that's going to cause an issue for you. So by having it in a group, of course, you can move it around however you want, wherever you want, and, you know, there you go. That's going to make life a whole lot easier. So something that comes up when people come in here is they want to use tags to take, say, these three pieces, and put that on a new tag. We'll call this furniture. And then we'll take all these three pieces and say, tag that as furniture. And now this is separate from the room. That's great. And that, that works if you want to turn the furniture off. But what that's not going to do, tags are not 2D layers. 2D layers would say, put these pieces of furniture visually above the floor plan. That's not an option. That's not how 3D works. In 3D, the thing that is above is the thing that's closer to the camera. So as I look like this, something that's closer to the camera is going to be above something that is further. You can see all of these pieces are the same distance. They're on the same plane, so they're in the same spot. Right now, in this this white view that I have, looking down where everything's colored the same, this works just fine, right? So I can move stuff around, I can, I can figure out where, where are things going to go, uh, where do I want to put this end table, where do I want to put this, this love seat, that kind of thing. I can do that, it all looks good. The issue's going to come in now, if I come in here and let's give our, uh, let's, let's make a nice yellow carpet because that's what, you know, most people want when they think about carpet is yellow. All right, so when we do that, all of a sudden, uh-oh, our furniture just turned yellow. As I move around, see that flicker? You guys remember I did a video a little while back on Z fighting, and that's what we're seeing here. Because these planes are coplanar, they're in the same spot, uh, they're fighting to say which, which plane is supposed to be seen, and they're flickering pixel by pixel as they jump on top of each other because they're in the exact same space. So what I could do here is I could grab all of these items and move them vertically. I'm going to constrain my movement to the vertical axes and let's just move it up like I'm just gonna move it up like two inches all right so in doing that now 
I actually created a layer. So I created uh, a space between my floor and my furniture where they're above. So that will get rid of that Z fighting. And the fact is, so right now, as I look at it, I might see a teeny bit of distortion because it's, like I said, this is bigger or closer to the camera. I can, of course, get rid of that by going into my camera, saying parallel projection. Now it doesn't care, you know, uh, about making what's closer to the camera. We were do this. We better go to camera, standard views, and hit top. All right. So now it doesn't care what's close to the camera. Everything's going to have the same scale. It's not going to make closer things bigger than further things. No perspective. This works great. I can come in here and I can move stuff around. We had everything selected. Let's go ahead and deselect and just move this. This looks great. This works great as long as I stay in plane. By that, I mean if I grab this and I come snap down to the corner, well, I've just taken it out of that two inch higher plane and I snapped it right back down to the ground. See that? So now I'm back to Z fighting again. So I got to grab this one and then move it vertically, pull it back up two inches. There we go. Now I can go back to my top view. So you can, you can pretty quickly see the issue that I'm calling out here. Another thing that's going to come up is say I want to see this chair tucked into that, that, that desk. Well, that's not going to work because, again, they're on the same plane. So to make that happen, i got to take this one and make it even maybe another two inches higher. Then when I go to my camera, I can go to my top view and, okay, that works. But, <laughs> again, I have to be careful. So if I wanted to, you know, have this come but right in here, as soon as I use this as a snap point, it's going to jump vertically to where that, hi that, hi that piece is the height of that desk. So you can see you pretty quickly end up in this kind of a messy spot where I'm using a tool how it's not intended to be used. Again, just gonna be straight about that. And uh, you kind of make it work, but it kind of gets weird and messy. You can absolutely do this by paying attention and being very careful. But I was thinking about this and I came up with a method that is, like I said, I'll maybe call it two and a half D where we create a 2D drawing like this without going in and creating all the 3D stuff that is fun and good. Uh, but we can leverage SketchUp for what it is by creating 2D items with some depth. So I'm gonna go to my standard view, I'm gonna go back to top view. I'm gonna do everything from this same parallel projection because that's what I would actually wanna output. And now each of these items, I gave a little bit of depth. So this is really nice because as I start moving around, I can do things like I can, whoops, I can snap and it's not going to end up in a weird, here we should probably, apples to apples, right? Let's get that beautiful gold coloring in here on this floor. Uh, and you can see, even though I snapped into that corner there, it didn't jump down to the height because if I look at this in 3D, everything has a little bit of depth. I even went ahead and made the desk twice the depth of the chair. So if I did want to go do something like slide that chair in, I could slide it over there and you can see it, it disappears right in there because it is actually 3D. So this, I mean, this may seem a little ridiculous to you if you're, you know, a SketchUp modeler to go, why would I go through that, that, that mess to do that? Uh, why wouldn't I just model it all in 3D? And if, if you're going for a schematic thing and you don't want to put in all the details, you want to keep a super light model, maybe this is one of 700 rooms that you have in your model and you want to keep it all real light, this might get you there. This might actually save you the time, energy, of you know, drawing this rectangle as opposed to even a not very detailed desk, much less geometry. So there's a couple of arguments I can kind of make that make sense here. But if you do have a spot where you want to create this 2D layout, you want to be full on schematic uh, and you want to use SketchUp, if those are the requirements, then doing something like this, creating these, these 2D items with a little bit of depth, you can kind of look at them as being maybe like cardboard cutouts. This is going to make it a lot easier to move things around. It's going to prevent Z fighting and it's just going to make it easier to, you know, to do your layouts. Uh, like this, rather than having to worry about that flat 2D piece constantly jumping to whatever you're clicking to. So I know this is a little weird, and a lot of you didn't ask for it, but we get this question often enough that it seemed to make sense to me to kind of put just a, a, a minute or two of thinking into this. How would I go about creating a 2D drawing? And creating those 2D entities with a little bit of depth 
just makes it a little bit easier because then I, I work in the 3D space that is what SketchUp is. There's no getting around that. It's not a 2D space. It is a 3D space. And by having them like still flat, they still look like those 2D entities. They're low poly and you can move them around without worrying about Z fighting. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos around here each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Have you ever battled with 2D drawings in SketchUp? Um, are you strongly opposed to them? Love to hear your thoughts. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.